Hi, I'm going to take a few minutes and go through your notes on pages 46 to 48. Um, we are going to start the Pythagorean theorem. And so our goal today is I can find the length of the third side of a right triangle. So I can find the length of the third side of a right triangle. Um, and then again, before we get started on the actual math, we're going to do some vocab to make sure you know what these words mean. Um, so our vocab words are Pythagorean theorem, right triangle, leg, and hypotenuse. And we are going to look at this two different ways. First is just going to be click and drag. Um, and then next we're going to label a triangle. So it says, this one says, the two sides adjacent to the right angle in a right triangle. So the two sides that are adjacent to the right angle, those are going to be your legs. So they're going to be like, if you look here, like this would be the right angle. So your two legs are the ones that are the legs. So they make a 90 degree angle. A theorem that states that the sum of the squares of two sides of a right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. That is the Pythagorean theorem. So in math terms, that's saying a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then we have a triangle that has one right 90 degree angle, two legs, and one hypotenuse. So a right triangle has one right angle. And then the hypotenuse, and if you ever have to spell it, it's hypo 10 u's, hypo 10 u's. Um, I say hypotenuse, um, but to spell it, I always go hypotenuse. Um, so that's going to be the side of the triangle that is opposite of the right angle, and it's always the longest side of the triangle. So again, if you have your right angle here, then the hypotenuse is this part here that's opposite of the right angle. So then let's label the diagram down here because I think that'll help as opposed to me waving my arms. Um, so our A and our B, you see here is the right angle. So the A and the B, the two that make the right angle, those are legs. So you're going to put leg there and leg here. And then the this is the right angle. Um, so the Pythagorean theorem is only going to work if it is a right triangle. So if it's not a right triangle, you won't be able to use the Pythagorean theorem. And then C is the hypotenuse. So again, here's your right angle. The opposite of that, the one that's opposite of the right angle, that's going to be the hypotenuse. That's always the longest side. And then your Pythagorean theorem, here's your formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So um, hopefully that helps set you up. Um, and then now we're going to go and try some examples. So here we go. Uh, we're going to find the missing side of the right triangle. So again, we know that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So when we look at this triangle, we see that we know a and b because they make the right angle. So we know that it's c that we need to find. So yes, he's maybe not. Um, so your length or one of your legs is eight inches and the other one is seven inches. So you'll see that we've plugged them in there. And then you have to say eight squared. So eight times eight is 64. And then seven squared means seven times seven is 49. And then we don't know what X squared is yet, so we just leave it alone. And then we're gonna take 64 plus 49. Um, so, Doing this in my head, I see that that's really close to 50. So if I did 50 plus 64, it'd be 114. And I have to take that one away. Um, so that would be 113. Oops, 113. And then here at the end, the last step. So this is going to be where you're going to take the square root. So that's why we practiced with square root last week. Um, the opposite of squaring a number is to take its square root. And so if you were to um, square root, um, if you were to square root uh, the side, the square root of x squared, what times itself gives you x squared? That would be x. 
And then on this side, you need to take the square root of 113. And then, so you can do that on a calculator. Um, and while, before I hit um, enter, we know that um, it's going to be irrational because we do not know what, um, what times itself gives us 113. We know it's going to be a long decimal, so we know it's going to be irrational. And here we go. It is 10.63. Um, we will round to the nearest hundredth unless the problem tells you otherwise. Oops. So, 10.63. Now, I want you to create a text box right here, and in all caps, I want you to make it say square root. I want you to bold it. You can change the font. You can change the size, and I do want you to highlight it. So if you want to highlight it in a different color, that's fine, but I want between the 113 and 1063, for it to say square root, because um, I don't have it to where you can draw the square root symbol um, over this, and so hopefully that'll help you. Now, I'm going to have you do the problem down here, all on your own. Um, you have your legs, trying to find the hypotenuse, so I'm gonna have you try that one. Um, and then I do wanna show you one of them on page 48 as well, because now you'll notice that I have one leg and I'm missing one leg, but I have the hypotenuse. So that's gonna look a little different here. So um, the leg that I have is three squared, or three, so then it's, that's where the three squared comes from. This says x squared, and that's gonna equal the hypotenuse, which is 11 squared. So when we do the math, three squared means three times three, so that's nine. We don't know anything about x squared yet, so it stays the same. And then 11 squared, 11 times 11 is 121. And then now, think about how we solve equations. We want to get the x by itself. So we need to move the 9 over here. So this time, instead of adding, we are going to subtract. So if I take 121, subtract 9, I get 112. And then I have x squared equals 112. The opposite of squaring a number is to square root. And so if I square root, that's really close to the other one, if I square root 112, I get 10.58 when I round. So again, I want you to um, make some text boxes here so you know what happened and what we didn't show by doing this. So I'm actually going to go to this other page and just copy and paste the one I already did. Feel free to do that as well. So we needed to take the square root to get to 1058. I also think this one, maybe it's even important um, to make another one, except this time it should say subtract to get x by itself. I want you to make one of those signs. So you remember what we had to do to get the x squared there. Okay, so um, the answer to this one would be 10.58. 10 um, and then we should label it. Sorry about that, I didn't do that on the other one either. These are labeled in centimeters, so that means that x up here is 10.58 centimeters. Oh, I still have it all caps. Oops. Well, you can say all caps. So that leaves you two to do. I want you to try the one on page 47 and try the one on page 48. Again, it does not hurt you to try because tomorrow you'll come to class, you'll watch a video where I explain them, you have plenty of time to change them before anyone sees it. So I'm going to have you try these two problems. Um, and please um, feel free to ask friends for help or send me an it's learning message and I will get to you when I can. Thank you very much.